with you with Creating with Grill Art. Today we're going to be painting this kind of fun zombie hand that is sticking out of the ground and catching a fly ball. It's got a lot of fun little elements to it. Take a peek. We're going to be using uh, canvas. This is stretched canvas and it's on a, I think it's a 9 by 13. I have to check that, but I do believe it's a 9 by 13 canvas. I've already pre-drawn drawn the um, hand, and hopefully I can figure out how to attach a template so that you can download your own, your own hand and draw it on there. And we're going to get started with these supplies. We're going to be using very limited paint palette today. I'm trying to just keep it not too much going on. We're going to be using blue white, red, black, and green. These are just the inexpensive uh, acrylic paint that you can find at any craft store. And um, they're the cheaper kind. They're not the very expensive. They're great for beginners. And I have a lot of them uh, just from doing art with kids. The next thing we're gonna need is a brush. And we're going to be using a sponge to paint the background. Let me show you again. That background's very fun, very wispy, um, and I wanted to keep it light. And that's the best thing with the sponge. I think it does a great job of keeping it really light. All right. So I already have uh, my most of my paint on my palette from painting before, so it's kind of a little messy, but at least it gives you the idea of what your colors you're going to need. I'm going to start off doing the background. I always kind of like to do the background first whenever possible. And I'm going to take my sponge. You can use like a kitchen sponge. This is actually from the dollar store, like in the car washing section, and I cut it up. I never reuse my sponges. I always just throw them away because... The ones, the sponges you get from the dollar store, I mean, I can cut up like 30, 30 little sponges like this, so I don't even bother washing them. Now, we're going to be dipping into um, a tiny bit into the black. Not much, because that black will spread around like crazy. And then I dipped pretty good into the white. And I'm going to start off here. And do you notice that my wrist is going back and forth? I'm not going over the same spot, just kind of back and forth. I'm already run out of paint, so I'm going to re-dip. Again, very little um, black. I'm not even pre-mixing it to make it gray. It's just from when you spread it around. And when you get close to uh, the hand and stuff, sometimes I just kind of drag it around. It gets really close. If you cover up some of the um, Sharpie, that's okay. Oop, too much black, see? I'm going to spin this around so that I can get a little closer. It's easier to do that. Drag it around. And then back to my brush strokes. What it does is it just gives kind of a very textured background. And I like that. And I like having the gray so that when you do the hand green, it really pops off the page. I think if it was like a blue background, it'd be kind of cutesy, and I don't want it too cutesy. So that's why I thought, oh, let's do a gray background just for fun. Maybe they're playing baseball on a rainy day. I'm just working on it a little bit. Ran, looks like I ran out of white paint, some alum or paint. I don't need very much. goes a long way. Kind of redip a little bit in the black again. And now I'm going to come over. I want to make sure I get my sides painted. When I paint the sides, I just drag it. Drag it along. And if you look really closely, you can see, let's 
Let's see how close I can get it. There's some white little spots in there, and I call those peekaboos. We want to make sure that um, you really cover up those peekaboos. So I'm just adding a little more paint. Again, you want it to be very wispy. Don't stay in the same spot, just move it around. If you get too dark of a spot, some black, too dark there, you could just go back over it. I think what I may do is add a little black to the top. I think that could be fun, just kind of having a little, a little black come on the top. See how it's just a little blacker up there? And that being said, I'm going to do it a little whiter, <clears throat> excuse me, whiter, right by the hands. Almost like it's, I'm doing these little, do you see how my little strokes are just pulling out a little bit? It's kind of fun. There, there's our background. What do you think? I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so you got the background on. Now we're going to start to paint our zombie hand. And I'm just using a round brush. I like it that it has a little point on it so that I can get into those little areas. I'm going to wet it and then I'm going to dry it. You don't want to have a wet brush. It's important that your brush isn't too wet because it'll water down your paint and you certainly don't want that. Now you got two colors here. We put the blue and we put green. And I'm gonna mix the two. I think it just gives a really cool um, zombie hand when it has a little green, little blue. And what I like to do is I like to press my brush along a line. In this case, it's along that blood line. And I'm gonna just drag it and then I'll wipe it around to get the rest off. And do you see how nice and crisp of a line I get when I do that? Get that in there, press and drag. It's not as green as I want, so I'm gonna add a little more green to it. I think it looks good too when it's not exactly like the perfect color. If you go over any Sharpie line, and I do recommend that once you draw your stencil, you go over it with a Sharpie. Then you can come back over later after it dries with your Sharpie again and re-crisp the lines. It's no big deal. So I'm just filling that in. I like how it looks. A lot of texture. You know, you figure that zombie hand's been rotten in that ground for a long time. And then that perfect baseball came and it decided it wanted to grab it. Do you guys play baseball? I used to play softball. I loved playing softball. I was a catcher. And that was my favorite place to be. You got all the action. Okay, so I'm just next little spot, just dragging along those lines. I'm going slow. Filling it in. Well, that's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? I like it. All right, so now I'm gonna do the hand. Same thing, Ooh, a little more green maybe. This is the hardest concept I think for people to learn is this dragging method. And notice I'm just going right over those lines there. I don't know if you can see them, but there's some Sharpie lines and I'm not even worried about them because I can still see through them in the paint and I know that I can go back over and do it. Some more crisp lines. This is a fairly easy painting. Um, there's not a lot of color. I kept the palette very simple. Um, and I didn't want to have too, I didn't want to be too hard being this is my first painting that I am teaching on YouTube. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's see. Going around those fingernails. 
yucky fingernails. Okay, I'm almost done. Pretty good, right? Now, what I want you to do is from this point to take it and blow dry it with your blow dryer. Get all this green dry. This should be dry. It's amazing how fast that dries. But get this really dry, this green. So go ahead and pause me for a second and then blow dry it, come back, and then we'll find out what happens next. Okay, you're back. Welcome. All right, so now we're gonna paint that baseball white. Just get that all painted white so we can move on to some other sections. You wanna make sure you clean your brush really good. See, I did, I've got green still on mine. I always tell the kids, tap the bottom of your water bowl 10 times. Keep it nice and dry. Come in with that white. I'm gonna try and paint around that um, Sharpie line. What if I go over it? Oop, I did. Oh well. It's hard to paint um, white on a white canvas. I think a lot of kids, a lot of adults struggle. Like, did I paint it all? Did I miss anything? But, you know, if you look at it at a different angle, sometimes you can see uh, a little bit of a different texture happening. The painted will have a little different texture, a little smoother. Okay, filled that in. Nice and easy. Also, down here, this is white too. It's supposed to be bone. Ooh, gross. Build that in easy peasy. I'm gonna clean my brush. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint those fingernails. So I'm gonna mix up. Oh, I gotta put more red on my thing. That's dried out red. Sorry guys, give me a second. I'm running out of it. Okay. I'm gonna put a little red and a smidge of black. That was a very tiny bit of black, and look at how dark it turned it. You definitely want it to still be almost a maroon color. And I'm gonna fill in those nails. I kinda like that because it, they don't look bloody, but they look kinda rotted. Fill that in. What did I do with it? I'm dipping in the wrong one. There you go. You don't want any white showing through. And I think it'll be good to come back over here with the Sharpie and just fill in some lines because the little lines in your nails make it look like it cracked. It looks kind of gross. I don't know what. I'm thinking I might just, while it's wet, see add a little green but I don't know you don't want it to turn green so there you go what do you guys think all right so now we're gonna get to painting the blood I've cleaned my brush dried it I'm gonna start right up here I want you to notice that I'm holding my brush like I would a pencil. And when I'm painting, I'm not pressing very hard. And the reason I'm not is because I just wanna use the very tip of my brush just to get into those little, little nooks and crannies. And I'm gonna run it alongside the edge, just the same way I told you to do it with the green. Filling that in. Look at that gory blood. Ugh. Probably got scraped on his way 
out of the dirt to catch that ball. What would you do to catch a fly ball? All right. Then we got blood right up in here. So I'm going to put that on. Make it drippy. Drippy on his knuckles. Maybe it was a she. Who knows? Could be a she zombie. Why not? All right. Here we go. A little there. Oops. He's got a little blood right there. And then we've got the blood right in here. Now this one, I'm going to make it a little different. I'm going to add a little blue to my red. Just a little bit. I'm going to show you my plate. I'm going to pick it up from the side. Because you know blue, you know blood underneath your skin is really blue. As soon as it hits the air, it becomes red. But I'm going to make this a little darker. Being that it's maybe a real fresh wound. And I want it to look a little bit different. Ugh. It's kind of gross to think about. All right, I'm going to paint right in here. Again, I'm pressing very gentle. You don't want to press too hard. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm going to move it up. I'm learning how to film. These are, these are my very first... Uh, videos that I'm putting out and you are watching them and I appreciate your support. There's that blood. Oh look you guys we forgot blood right in there. So I'm gonna wipe it. I'm not even gonna wet it. I'm just gonna wipe it and re-dip it into the red that does not have the blue. Get it in there. Now it looks pretty good, I think. Making it drippy. Little blood. Boy, I forgot all the blood. There's a little blood here. Yeah. Now, what you can do, if you have a red Sharpie, it might be better. Um, if not, you put a little red on the tip of your brush, and you got to press very gentle, very gentle. And I'm going to do these little stitch lines. Because baseballs have those stitches. It's very important, though, that you don't push hard. I'm barely pressing. Because you want them to be skinny little stitches. If you press too hard with your brush, they're going to look like big, fat lines. They won't look like stitches. Also, did you notice that I moved the canvas to kind of help me out? Whatever angle is best for you is what you need to do. Move that canvas. If you have an easel, that's nice. I didn't want to paint on an easel because of my camera setup. I wanted you to see. So get all those little stitches and now it's starting to look like a baseball. Right? I dried my brush right now. I had leftover red and then I wiped it so that it's kind of just has a little bit of remnants of red left on it. Didn't have a lot, just a little bit. And I did that and I put it right over that bone because you think there might be a little blood left over on it. Ooh, gross. Okay. Next step is we're going to paint the ground. And this is kind of fun. I'm going to add, see that red that's left over? I'm going to add a little bit of black. You don't need too much. goes a long way. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint it and let that red streak in there. These lines will probably vanish, these little ones here. But that's okay because I'll be able to put it back in with the next color I'm going to show you that makes it fun. It's important to kind of paint underneath here on the bottom of your canvas. That way when you hang it up on the wall, it doesn't look unfinished. Because these canvases are meant to, um, they don't need a frame. You can put a frame on them, but you don't need a frame on them. Now when you get close to like the zombie hand, you want to just drag it like I showed you everywhere else. You kind of drag your paintbrush around. I mean, don't forget to do the sides either. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to move my canvas. Remember I told you it's always good to move your canvas to make it easier. It's a better angle for me. i got to get the side here. don't want to forget that. And then what's fun is I'm going to add, believe it or not, some green. And I it's important to do it while the black is wet so that it kind of blends in. See? Maybe I'll do a little bit up there. A little here. And I like it to ha look kind of stripey so that you have little green lines in it. Don't be afraid to leave it. You don't have to blend it in. Now I'm going to put, and I still have that black on my brush. I'm going to add a little black and double dip black and green. Come in and do some grass. Now how does grass grow? I teach this all the time to kids. Grass grows up. So when you're pressing your um, brush, I like to start at the bottom of the grass. I'm not pressing hard. And then I drag, drag, drag and kind of wisp it up. And the faster you do it, the less thinking about it, the better. I'm going to put a few more in here. Grass also grows different lengths, different directions. You don't want it to look like this fresh mode grass, okay? This is supposed to be out on the ball field. Okay, how about that? Looking good, right? Now, we're going to do one more thing. It's my very favorite thing to do. We're going to apply splatter. So, wipe my brush. I'm going to, excuse me, wet my brush. And then I'm going to dry it, but not, it's still wet. It's not dripping or anything, but it's still wet. I'm going to dip it into the red. See the red there? This is my little trick. Take another brush. You could use a pen, whatever. And I just tap it. Move it where I want it to go. I've got to have some blood splatter just to make some effect. You know what I did in the other one I forgot is I did some almost like blood splattering out of the ground. I did a little bit of, of that. Doesn't that look nice and yucky? What do you guys think? That's a pretty easy project. It's super fun and I hope you enjoy making it. Definitely tag me on Instagram. Uh, you can tag me at hashtag Gorilla Art Studio or hashtag Gorilla Art Zombie. I want to see what you're making. I want to see it for sure. I dare you to be creative today.